This is my R36S and I noticed some thermal throttling while playing PSP games. Thermal throttling is when the CPU lowers performance to prevent the chip from overheating. Let me show you. There's a specific location in Little Big Planet where I found the FPS frames per second to drop significantly. Most of the game runs at 30 FPS except for rare locations like this one. When I step here on the second platform, the frames drop. Keep in mind, this test is with the R36S first booting up cool. Let's get a range. I see a max of 25 frames per second and a low of 21 frames per second. So the range is 21 to 25 frames per second. This is with our CPU cool. Now this is after 15 minutes of playing Little Big Planet. The CPU is hot. Let's go to the second platform again and keep an eye on the frames per second. It dropped on the 20 FPS right away. The highest seems to be 22 FPS. It even dropped to 19 FPS at one point. So when it's hot, the range is 19 to 22 frames per second. Here are the scores side by side. That's evidence of thermal throttling, and I think it's only concerning on high performance games like Nintendo 64, PSP, and Dreamcast. To cool the CPU, I bought this copper kit that's used to cool down NVMe SSD drives. I'll put a link in the video description to this kit. The heat spreader fits perfectly inside the R36S. The copper is one millimeter thick. There are components here that I don't want to short out with this copper metal piece. So I'm gonna cover this area here with a thermal pad. I have this extra square piece of one millimeter copper that I'm going to add on the CPU. You can cut a square piece from the second copper heatsink in the kit. The reason why I'm adding this piece is because I want to target the CPU, not the RAM chips. I cleaned the copper square with alcohol and a Q-tip. I added thermal paste to the CPU before putting the first piece of copper. I used Noctua, but you can use whatever thermal paste you have. I cleaned the copper surface here with alcohol and a Q-tip. I added thermal paste to the copper square. Then I added the big heat sink on top of that. Last, I added the thermal pads. Two of them were needed to keep everything from moving inside the R36S. You don't want it to sound like this. You'll want it to sound like this. I'm checking to make sure there's good contact with the heat sinks and everything looks good. The next day, I got this idea to add some holes to the back and I lined the inside of the back case with copper tape. You do not have to do this. This is just me being extra. Just using a heatsink kit is good enough. After a day of gaming, let's see what we get. This is with the CPU cool. The numbers look about the same with and without the heatsink. It goes up to 25 and it even went up to 26 FPS once. Our range is 21 to 26 FPS. Our goal here is to decrease thermal throttling. So I warmed up the CPU by playing Little Big Planet for 15 minutes. Let's check the FPS on that same location. Okay, numbers look good. We are still getting up to 25 frames per second. It even went up to 26 FPS once. So the range with the heatsink mod is 21 to 26 frames per second hot. Here are the full numbers. I would say that this mod worked in decreasing thermal throttling. I think it was worth it. Let me add a couple of things. I noticed the thermal padding on the RAM chips was not touching the copper heatsink. So I added another layer of thermal pad to make it touch and the performance went down a little bit. I think that's because when you do that, you're bridging the heat from the CPU with the RAM chips. The CPU runs hotter than the RAM chips. So when you bridge them, the RAM chips will get hotter. Also keep in mind that every time you remove the case, you'll need to clean and repaste the paste that you separated. This will give you optimal performance. Leave your thoughts and questions below in the comments. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.